Mr. Harris here, and welcome to a new video of Chapter 6. In this, we're going to talk about matter and the particle theory. Okay, so first off, you can have a look at this diagram over here. The mother is asking the boy, you finished all the chocolate, the box is empty. But the boy is saying there's still a lot of matter inside. Now, what's what does this word matter mean? It's not the common word that we know, like when we say, what's the matter with you? This matter that we're talking about is matter is anything which has mass and it takes up space. Okay. For example, some examples of matter could be stones, the clouds, air, basically anything that could take up space and has mass. So some examples of non-matter are sound or light. Okay. On the other hand, let's talk about particle theory. Say, for example, we have a stone, right? And if you keep using a hammer to break it, eventually, what will we get? So actually, what we know is matter should be made up of tiny particles. So what, so what happens over here is when you keep on breaking the stone, when you keep on hammering the stone, eventually you'll get these really, really, really tiny particles but we don't really have any evidence to support this back, especially back in years ago, 2,500 years ago. So right around the 18th century mark, scientists eventually started to find some more evidence to support this theory, the particle theory about how matter is made up of tiny particles. And that is how they developed the particle theory. So the particle theory actually has five, I would say, five uh, main steps or you can say five statements over here first off all matter is made of particles and these particles they are tiny different substances are made up of different particles the particles are moving randomly all the time so they move in any directions all the time and there are empty spaces between these particles so these five very important statements we should definitely know about this so let's talk about them in more details over here. So particles are actually very, very small. They're very, very tiny. And it's actually quite difficult to see them even under microscopes. So do we have any evidence to support this th theory over here? Actually, we do. Now let's think about this. Say, for example, I have 50 cm cube of water and I'll add 50 cm cube of alcohol. And naturally, we would say that when we add these two together, we will get 100 cm cube of liquid in total. Is that right? Actually, this is not the case. The total volume that we get when we add, when we mix water and alcohol is actually less than 100 cm cube. Okay, just one more reminder, cm cube is actually the same as ml, milliliters. Now, why is this the case? Now, let me show you another example. For example, we have 50 cm cube of soya beans and 50 cm cube of sago. Now, when you mix them together, you'll probably think that in total, when I add these two together, I would get 100 cm cube. That's what we, that's what would a normal person say, right? However, actually, the total volume is also less than 100 cm cube. Why is this the case then? Now, if you look carefully, if I draw the label diagram to show the mixture of the soybeans and sago, you'll notice that the sago are actually taking up the space in between the soybeans. Okay, and you can see over here, it's not really 100 cm cube. So in other words, the same, we can apply the same principle when we added water and the alcohol. Actually, the alcohol or the water may take up some space in between. So, as I've just mentioned, water and alcohol, they're actually, are they made out of the same particles or different? Of course, they are different. And there are, as I mentioned earlier, there are some, there are spaces between the particles. And when they're mis mixed together, the smaller particles will fill the spaces between the larger particles. And so the total volume is actually smaller than the sum. So this is a concept that is very similar to when we were talking about distillation 
as uh, I mean filtration. Remember in the lab, I showed you the filtration setup where you have rock chips, some marble stones, and those that are tiny, that those that are smaller in sizes, they could fit in in the small spaces in between. The same concept is also applied over here. Okay. So different substances are made up of different particles of different sizes. And as mentioned earlier, there are spaces or you can say gaps between particles. Okay. So let me go back to the particle theory, the five statements that we saw. Let me wrap this out very quickly. So just now, as I showed you, all metal, all matter is made up of particles. The particles are usually very tiny. Different substances are made of different particles, and I showed and I told you they also have different sizes. Okay, and there are also spaces between different particles. Now let me talk about the fourth one. The particles are always moving randomly in all directions all the time. Say for example, we have gas particles, right? For example, you, there's a coffee shop or any shop and you could smell it, right? So even if you're walking from this over here or you're walking over here, you can pretty much smell it. And the reason behind is the particles are moving in all directions. All right, all good. So let's move on. Let me talk a bit more about atoms and molecules. So in particles, we can separate them into two, atoms or, mo or molecules. So atoms over here, they're the basic unit of matter. They come in different sizes and masses. On the other hand, molecules, they are made up of small, small particles formed from atoms. So in other words, I could say it is made up of two or more atoms. Okay, and these atoms can be of only one kind or different kinds. I'll talk more about this. What do I mean by one kind or different kinds? Let's see some examples first. So for example, I have a gold, gold metal, or if I have a silver metal, inside a gold metal, I will have gold atoms over here. So you can see atoms over here. And over here, I have silver atoms. Okay. For molecules, now over here, as I said earlier, molecules are when atoms are joined up together. Okay, so two or more atoms, usually two or more atoms. So over here, each one of this is an atom. So I have one oxygen atom on the left over here, and this is another oxygen atom. However, when I look at them together, I would say this is an oxygen molecule. So like you can see over here, this is an oxygen molecule. But if I want to be more specific, this is one oxygen atom. This is a second oxygen atom. So an oxygen molecule over here is made up of two oxygen atoms. Now let me look at water. So water over here, if I look at the whole part over here, this is called a molecule. So these are molecules. Okay, however, if I look at them individually, first off, I will see that this red part over here is an oxygen atom. And the other part over here, the white ones, these are hydrogen atoms. So a water molecule in this case is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Okay, so just, just to differentiate between what are atoms and molecules. So over here, when I go back, as, it, as I said earlier, I'll mention what this is. Atoms can be of only one kind for a molecule. Say for example, just now we were just talking about oxygen molecule. It has only one kind of atom, which is of course oxygen atom. And there could be different kinds of atoms. For example, just now we saw a water molecule where there were hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. Okay, so let's wrap up this part. So let's do some check on, checkpoint questions. 
Question 1a. Particles are tiny, but we can still see them with our naked eye. Is that true? Of course not. That is false. We cannot see particles with our naked eye. Let's see question B. When 50 cm cube of water is added to 50 cm cube of alcohol, the total volume is smaller than 100 cm cube. Yes, this part is true. This supports that there are spaces between particles. Yes, that is true. Let's see question C. Air particles are moving randomly at all times. Yes, that is also true. And finally, question D. All substances are made up of one kind of atoms. Is that true? Is there only one kind? No, that is not true. Of course, there could be different kinds. Just now, as I showed you earlier, water molecules, it has hydrogen atoms and oxygen atom. So you can see over here, there are two different kinds for a water molecule. So this, the answer is false. In case, let's see question two. We can smell the scent of flowers from a florist far away from us. Which statements of the particle theory can explain this? So of course you have these answers. All matter is made up of particles. The particles are tiny and particles are moving randomly on all the time. So please make sure you know the five statements of particle theory. Those will be very, very important. Okay. Uh, I just want to like to mention one over here. Not all substances are made of one kind of ap atoms. Okay. There could be some that are made of, of only one, while some could have more than one. Okay. So this wraps up this part of chapter 6.1. I'll see you guys in the next video when we'll talk about chapter 6.2. All right. See you. Bye.